Tonight's guest is actor, musician and writer David Borden. Hello. Hello, how are you? Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to Drinks with MJ. Oh, thanks for having me. What are you drinking? Uh, rum and Coke. Lovely. On the hard stuff? Uh, Captain Morgan's. Fine. Is that hard stuff? Do you remember the first time you had a drink? An alcoholic no. drink? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, That's the best way. Yeah, well, I've gone too far. Now, um, <laughs> what age do you yeah. mean? Yeah. Um, I think I was about 15. 15? Yeah, 15, 16. Do you remember what it was? Uh, I do. What was it? It was whiskey. Whiskey? It was, yeah. Lethal? Uh, it was just me thinking I was hard. Just, just in, 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 in the deep yeah. ends? Whiskey lad. And then, next thing you know, whiskey lad, yeah. <laughs> I was 13, so cheers. Oh. Acton, so you've yes. been in a lot of stuff at the moment. You've been in The Nachnitze. That's done well, hasn't it? Uh, yes, it The Nachnitze. And what are you filming at the moment? Uh, see the sunrise. See the sunrise, yes, amazing. Yeah. So with Andy Taylor. Yes. Again, fantastic. How did you get into acting? Um, it was just a natural extension from my other creative works, I think. Like I, I was a musician for many, many years. Yeah. Um, and then when when that sort of hit a hard spot. Yeah. Um, instead of trying to force through that, I let the musicianship come back to me naturally, and I focused on something else. So I did yeah. drama for a while. And, and you're then, very openly about like mental health and stuff, aren't you? And yes. on social media, and you, you don't shy away from it, which is great, you know, especially in this day and age. Do you think that, like, living with your wounds open helps you as a performer? Um, yes, I do. I mean, it's not that you can't uh, conceive what that would feel like when you perform, but having felt it, I think, adds an extra level of realism that you, you can tell. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, and so, yeah, there was, there's a lot to draw from, I think, from the past memories, emotions, things like that. Do you know when you like your film and stuff, is it, and you're like you're having a day, which we all get, and you're like, I just don't, I just, I just can't be arsed, or I, I don't want to do this. No, How do you it. move yourself forward? I don't do it. You don't. I, don't, do I it. never force anything. Um, it, it's the reason why I, I understand if you have to do it, if you're yeah. obliged. I understand that's a different thing. But if, because I write and I do music and I do drama. I do it when I feel it and when it becomes obligatory and it becomes difficult and I'm struggling to find the muse I focus on a different one yeah uh, it, it either happens naturally or, or for me it rarely happens uh, which means I will go a long period where I won't do any drama because I'm not feeling the right uh, yeah. emotional state or performative state so I'll just write or I'll do something else was that a journey to get to then or you know to you to be so in tune with yourself was that a process or have you always been that way Oh no, I haven't. I had to find it. It took yeah. effort. It, it's one of those things that I wish I could go back and tell younger me. You know, you will find peace with things. You will find calm. Um, it just just got to rough the storm, I suppose. And then, then you eventually see your own patterns, I think, is the important thing. You look back and say, well, I don't want a repeat of that. What caused it? And you start to study yourself and eventually figure out what's, what the causes are. Yeah. 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 It's, it's so important to know as well, isn't it? How was your childhood growing up? I know you moved around a lot. Um, yeah, it, it was, the emotion was there, um, the, we, we never had, we, we weren't a wealthy family, we didn't have much, but what we did have, oh, me, it was just me and my mother really, um, was a lot of emotion which helped, I think that yeah. coloured me into who I am today, yeah. and obviously when my stepdad came into the mix, uh, he showed me what a father is, which yeah. is a father of choice, not obligation, Yeah. and uh, yeah, so, so my childhood wasn't, wasn't traumatic in any way, in any shape. It, it helped me emotionally. It's only the later years that became uh, the difficult ones. And how was that with, I know you spoke openly about your mom and finding herself. How was that? How do you think that has moulded you today, um, going through all that time? It's, it's moulded me. It's moulded me in a few different ways. Um, my, my battles in life are very different than her battles. Um, and same with everybody that I've, I've met along the way that have had battles. Yeah. But it's something different when it's your parents and you, yeah. you, you see them as, as mortals rather than these amazing figures. And you, you uh, part of you just, just when, when you see them heal and recover, yeah. you know that you can get through anything. And I wouldn't have given up anyway. Yeah. But it's nice to see you make it on your own. Yeah, absolutely. Um, That's yeah. so important. So when was the, do you think your, in your life was the, first moment that you encountered with mental health? Because I've battled with it since I was five years of age. When was your first, like, oh my God? Um, I can't remember a first one. Yeah. I, I, I can always remember emotional outbursts yeah. when I was younger, which I think translates into adulthood in many ways. Yeah. Um, 
but for me it was always an internal manifestation, so it was uh, self-harm and isolation with the facade of um, confidence, going out and being a confident actor, a musician, when deep down inside you're the exact opposite. Um, and my, my struggle was, was just coming to terms with that really and coming yeah. to terms with this, this is who I am. I yeah. now have to figure out how to pilot this ship yeah. where I'm in control of it rather than it controlling me, so to speak. Um, and so self-reflection, self-honesty, and uh, eventually you find a place of peace. Yeah. At least I did. Um, but for some people it takes a lot longer. Yeah, that, that's so important as well, isn't it? To just yeah. find yourself. And it does take time. It does, It takes yeah. bumps in the road. It takes everything. But to, to be at peace now. What about moving forward? Where do you want to be in 10 years? It's a bloody good question. Um, <laughs> I've not really given it much thought. Um, I would like to carry on on the path I'm on, which is one that yeah. makes me happy. You yeah. know, as long as I can say in 10 years from now, I'm happy. Um, then I've, that's where I want to be. If you know what I mean. Yeah, of um, course. Whether that is with writing, whether that is with my poetry or my acting or music, unlikely but possibly music. Um, if I'm happy, that's where I want to be to answer your question. Where did your music journey start? Uh, my mother is a painter wow. and an artist and a bloody good one. And she always raised me around art, music, um, poetry, literature. And I remember I was 14 years old. She took me to Forsyth in Manchester, bought me my first guitar, which was a massively oversized uh, six string classical Spanish guitar. And it was far too big for me. And the staff laughed at her on the way out, as if to say, we've made a sale, but he's, he's never going to play that. It's too big for him. And then um, she just pushed me every day. Come on, you can do this. You know, don't give up on something. And I, when I became a guitarist, she reminds me all the time of, you know, I was holding your hand, you had that guitar that was too big for you. Uh, my journey started with that, knowing that she had every faith that I could create, and uh, I'll never let her down on that. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. In that moment, when you were at your lowest point of your life, and you yeah. spoke about the self-harm and the, you know, the self-abuse, the downward spiral, Yes. How, what was the moment in, when you were experiencing that, when you thought, enough's enough, like, no more, no more of this? Of the self-harm? Yeah. Um, I used to take photographs of it. So I, I have a photograph on my phone, which I use to prove a point sometimes when, when this topic comes up, of me in 2016, so 26. I wasn't an infant, I wasn't a teenager. I was, I was coming into adulthood, old enough to know better, some would think. But I was covered in scars. I was really skinny. From your... From me, abuse, yeah. caused by me. And I was really skinny and I was lost and I was trying to find chemical happiness rather than actual happiness. And um, I was destroying myself in many, many ways. I think I was trying to find love, legitimate love, you know, not, not, okay. not surface level love. Something to compensate for the other things that were going on. Right. Because clearly existing in myself wasn't doing it. I needed some external force to, to make me feel worth something. But my own self-destructive behaviours caused troubles that I, I regret to this day. I wish I could go back and behave differently. Um, I think we all have a moment there, don't course, we? We, we all do. think, of course oh my do, God, yeah. I wish I could have lived that time again. But once I found love that felt legitimate... And what was that for you? It was my... I've loved two people now. Um, I can say I've felt it. Whether it lasted is a different thing. Um, but the first time I thought I felt love was with my previous partner. That's when I thought, I, I need to no longer destroy myself. That fell apart for, for different reasons. Um, but the second time I felt love, and I thought this is it, which is my current partner, um, I have no need to destroy myself because I care too much about keeping her happy. And that, that's my motivation. And it will forever be my motivation. Um, what was that where, you know, that moment where you were, you were self-harming, you weren't eating, you just weren't looking after yourself. What was the lowest moment of your life? You thought, you, you, you made the thought in your moment, there's, there's no coming back from this. What was that moment? There is one, but it, I can't talk about it here, unfortunately. That is, that is one, it's a bridge I haven't quite crossed yet in my own mind. I'll get there one day, I'm, I'm writing about it now, but I had trusted somebody and they 
were horrible to me in, in a way that I will never forget. I understand how a person can become that way, but um, unfortunately, I felt the brunt of it, is all I'm going to say on that. Uh, and I was low, I thought there was no recovering from this. I, I did have friends that were, were just, just gave me the love I needed. And it took me four or five years. I would say, well, 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, so yeah, five years to find peace, to even call myself David again. Yeah. Um, because I was so severely hurt. Uh, but once I found peace and I found love and legitimacy, um, so circles back to what you were saying before when you were saying that, you know, where do you find your inspiration for your drama and that angst and that feeling? That's where. Uh, that, is the, that is the moment. There, well, there's, there's a few of them, but that, that you know, the f knowing what it is to feel like you don't want to exist tomorrow. Yeah. And then saying, well, I know it's a bit of a platitude, but a permanent solution to a temporary problem. You can get through this. Yeah. Of course you can. You made it through yesterday, you'll make it through tomorrow. Um, if not for you, for your mother. Yeah. For... Or as you said, someone you love. Or someone you love. Cheers Wait. to that, darling. It's You're always here, someone you love. And you're happy and healthy, and that, that's the main thing. I am very happy. Um, yeah, I'm in, a, I'm, in a, I'm in an incredible headspace of late, which is great cons considering 2020. Yeah, yeah, of course, <laughs> absolutely. What is on the horizon for you, David Borden? Another great question. Uh, I don't know. I've got... Um, some poetry commissions I have to write, films that we're shooting that you know about. I do. Um, started my gigging again, which is good. The pubs are finally open, so you can you know strum away, is make some are? money. Yes, they are. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'm just focusing on getting back into the drama, the music, and the writing, especially the writing. And falling in love with it again. Uh, I needed to fall in love to fall in love with that again. That's all I'll say. The heart strings. <laughs> do you know what? Thank you so much for being so honest and so Always, true. Yeah. And it's, it's just been such a joy to have you on the show. Drinks with MJ, David Barden, thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you do next with your film. <laughs> Cheers, David, thank Cheers. you so much. Cheers, it's been a joy to talk to you too. Thank you, Nekki. <laughs> thank you.